some dibbles. Get all back to answer some more goddamn questions. And today's questions, first we got a one-offer sent to Buck in my email. And uh, I figured I'd print it out and, and answer it first because he said he's asked multiple. We'll get to the thing. He says he asked multiple times and I've yet to answer them. So we can figure out print it out here. And then we'll get to the next goddamn video on it. Here's a one-offer from Tim Parlier. Parlier. I don't know if that right, bra, bra. What's up, G-Dog? I've been trying to find a contact email. Service at hellsatbangers.com. That's the one I answer, God damn it. And this was all I could find. Oh, yeah, where'd you find it at? I've known about the label for 15, for 15, assuming 15 years. Got multiple label compilation CDs, but surprisingly haven't ordered from you yet. Really, that's weird that you have multiple samplers, the compilation discs. But never order from us. I mean, we do hand some out. Like some of the bands, will give some a bunch of, so they hand them out. Um, and when the uh, distros and shit sometimes ask, but not that many. We get ten or so shit like that. So it's it's funny that that many made it to you. Like for example, Church of Disgust, one of the good members. I think it was actually two of the guys. They asked, uh, "Hey, can you toss in some of those samples?" And I just grabbed a handful, five, ten, whatever, toss them in there. So maybe you got one from people like that. But the fact you got multiple. Um, oh, and then we had them out of shows, too, and shit like that at times, especially like Maryland and stuff like that. And then the last few shows I went to, I, I was handing some out, handing some out at the goddamn uh, Merciful Fate uh, show, but couldn't uh, hand out too many because barely bring any in because there were a fucking bunch of tampon boys up there about purses and shit like that with Lindsay's purse and bags and fucking I couldn't even bring a goddamn record in to get so stupid shit like that. So I can only have like a fucking handful I can fit in my pocket. Uh, but I came across your YouTube videos this past year and tune in every day. It's what I like to hear, bra bra. Keep on tuning. Make sure you tune in every day for 2023. That's what fucking year we're in. Because I plan on missing no goddamn days. That's the goal, goddamn it. Said I wouldn't in 2022, and I sure as fucked in it. So we're going to go 2023, not miss a single day, too. Not five days a week. Take fucking weekends off for church. Goddamn it, either. We're talking whole fucking week. Seven days a week, motherfuckers. I love some questions, comments on the vids, but didn't, don't think you ever got back with me. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. Yeah, like I said, I just literally search for the question marks, especially now because I every video gets over 100 comments. So, And I try to get to just each video and then, hey, if I miss some, I miss some. But keep on asking. But, or, or, fuck, if you really want an answer, email to me. And if you email to me and it's like, if it's that much of an important question, I'll uh, do a video like this, goddammit. Full disclosure to the other devils. Don't don't light my inbox up with a bunch of stupid shit though, because <laughs> I get enough emails as is, and I'm buried. And that emails is just a small part of my responsibility. Anyways, I've been thinking you guys really need to get on with the next Hell's Head Bash. We've been talking about it, or this spring or summer. It definitely won't be this spring or summer. I mean, fuck. Full disclosure, man. If we were to start talking about it today. Last few times we did it, we did a Labor Day weekend. The reason we chose Labor Day weekend is because it's generally a three-day weekend for uh, most people. And um, Maryland Death Fest had cover, was that Memorial Day weekend in May? That was a three-day weekend. And that's a good, you know, another four or five months away. So we took Labor Day weekend because nobody else was fucking using it. And it's still nice out. You don't want to come here when, in, the, in Ohio when it's all cold and it just fucking sucks. Beginning of the first week of September, it's still nice out. You know, it's like 80 degrees. Um so you can enjoy yourself. So we would still plan for Labor Day weekend. So if we were to start now, well, we pretty much, uh, we would have to start now for it to be next year's Labor Day. So not this year, so 2024 September, if we were to start now. And we haven't started, because as far as like, it's mostly because the overseas bands, um, especially now with all this fucking, who the fuck knows how, how hard it is or not to fly overseas. I'm getting the uh, impression it's not as bad as I thought it would be. But I'm sure some countries are worse than others. So, like, for example, our, our I think it was the last head bash we had, like, Power From Hell, for example, from Brazil. They played uh, our, our fest. I, I get the vibe, like, Brazil now would be a massive pain in the ass. So we'd have to start setting them down. And I doubt we will do one by 2024, the way things are being talked. But I think it is a strong possibility 2025. 2025. Now, Eric and I have been brewing up ideas as far as just doing a um, – a smaller one-off show. I'm all for it. Chase, I think, just doesn't give a shit. Um, he kind of didn't really comment, but Eric's for it, especially when he, him and I were uh, discussing ideas, and it's like, instead of doing a head bash, you know, still do it, but in the meantime, while we're kind of just getting our feet back wet into it during all this post-COVID and haven't done it in a while, we do a one-off show and maybe call it, like, Devil's Night. Hell's Devil's Night. You know what I mean? So, throwing around that idea. 
And as far as which club we would have, I threw out some bands. I was like, just let's do something simple. Let's do just uh, U.S. bands for the Devil's Night and just get our feet wet. Because, yeah, like I said, all the problems, pain in the ash, and the fucking moolah uh, fronted, that really comes with the overseas bands for the flights, you know, plane tickets, and just all that fucking bullshit. That's where the Scottola really comes. Because obviously, yeah, those up to me. Uh, number one band I would get is Hemorrhage. You know who might be number two though? And actually, I, I didn't, I didn't, I haven't even said this to Eric or Chase whatsoever. If we do do another Hell's Head Bash, I don't know how realistic it would be. Other than Hemorrhage being my main band, I want to see who's really up there now is a Pharmacist, and I think they're kind of doable. So, hell, they're. I mean, I wouldn't say they're on Hell's Headbangers, but they are kind of. We did the cassette of the new album, and the LP LP is supposed to be here next guy next month. Second Pharmacist album, second full length, which is fan-fucking-tastic. My personal favorite goddamn metal album of 2022. Yeah, that's right. I said it, goddamn it. Best one of all 2022. Um, the LPs are supposed to be here next month. So, we, you know, we've worked with Pharmacist, you know what I mean? And hopefully we'll get to do more shit. So they can represent the label. And it's from what I understand, I'm kind of confused by looking at Metal Archives. It's two guys. It says they're from Japan. But it looks like, like just the drummers from Japan. But then the uh, singer, bass player, guitar, I think he does bass and guitar and vocals. He says he's from Ukraine, but I think he moved out of Ukraine. So I hope he's not in Ukraine because, God damn, that'd be, then that's why I say it's kind of skeptical of can we get pharmacists because if he's in Ukraine, maybe by 2025 you'd be able to travel here, but definitely not this fucking year. Um, he's just wouldn't be able to get over here. But uh, the fact that it's just two guys, I don't know if they have a third guy. Do they have even done shows? Put in there, has pharmacists ever done shows? And uh, is a guy from Ukraine informing because I don't know. I'm a little fucking curious, but that is a band that's not out of question. Uh, I haven't brought it up to the table, so if, if my brother see this, and that's the idea to fucking brew over. But that's a band I really want to fucking see. And I think they're they're blowing up a property popularity. Their shit, as far as a new bands, they just started in 2020, um, maybe 2019 with a demo, but the first full length was 2020. So they've been around what fucking three four years tops. Um, that uh, their, their their shit sells very very well, and and I'm a huge fucking fan of it. So uh, if there's no way they've ever come out of the states. It's questionable if they've ever, ever played shows. So that would be a fucking banger too. So that's what's ruining this goddamn skull. Anyways, where the fuck are you all? Goddamn it! Uh, I've got a friend that's gone. I, that's go well, okay. Anyways, I've been thinking you guys really need to get on with the next Hell's Head Bash or this spring or summer. Yeah, that's definitely not. It's definitely not happening this spring or summer. I've got a friend that's gone. So he has friends that have gone, but he hasn't he's heard how great it was, is what he's basically saying. Definitely get deceased in Hellwitch. Uh, deceased would be extremely fucking easy. I just hope for me, I mean, you know, I'm a huge deceased fan, and personally, if I, as far as I'm concerned, if you don't like deceased, you basically don't like metal and just get lost, bra bra. Um, that's my personal goddamn opinion. Um, they'd be very easy. I just hope that the crowd isn't deceased out as far as like Cleveland, because they play here quite often. But that'd be no problem. I mean, you know, King's, you know, a friend and you know, of, of all of us, you know, for years. And we work with them and been on the label and et cetera, et cetera. Hellwitch, uh, I don't know those guys personally, but I don't think that'd be out of the question. Uh, the only thing that they wouldn't pop in my mind first, because we try to get bands that kind of represent Hell's Head Bangers, not all. We, and then we try to get some, uh, if it's going to be somebody that's not on the label, we try to get somebody that's going to be a drawer. So, for example, like we brought over Satanic War Master. And Grand Belial's key because we knew to draw people, and, and, and we like them. I'm not like I like the first. Actually, I thought the, I, I thought for sure it was gonna suck dick, but the new Grand Belial's key album that came out last year, I thought it was really fucking good. I was like, oh shit, this is actually really good. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Listened to it several times. Picked up an LP. Um, <laughs> yeah, I definitely liked it. Uh, and then the first album's always been a banger. I just didn't like the, the, the two. Maybe I should go back and listen to them. The, the Judo Beast and the uh, Kosher Rod. I remember not liking those at all. Been years since I listened to them. Maybe I should go back there because I thought the, I, I've always loved the uh, first album, Mocking the Philanthropist, and, um, and now the new album. Anyways, but that's why we got those bands, even though they've never been assigned to Hells. I mean, Satanic Warmaster, we have worked in, uh, like the Arch Goat split. Somebody. So, yeah, technically Satanic Warmaster, too, We've it has been a kind of Hells label, but we knew those would be drawers. We even talk like just joking around, like this is before all this fucking tour shit. Like a band like Merciful Fate, what would it take again before they are reformed? What would it take to get them coming? But it's like, oh, dude, you know, you're talking crazy money to do a one off show easily, easily a hundred grand. I wouldn't be surprised they'd ask for a half fucking million to do a one off. And I'm talking like this was back in 2016 and shit. Um, so we threw around stuff like that because, well, I was like, who, who, uh, you know, obviously that's a no brainer. Uh, who, who wouldn't want to see that? Obviously, yeah, but duh. I, but, 
It's just not realistic. But that's somebody that make an exception. If it was a realistic band, that's going to draw, just represents metal as a whole, but not on Hell's Head Vegas. A band like Hellwitch Size, again, wouldn't be against it, but it's like we've never worked with them. I don't know the guys or anything. And it's not like they're going to draw over like, to be honest, like a band like on our label, like Perdition Temple or Abysmal Lord, I, I highly suspect they would draw more people than Hellwitch. I could be wrong on that. Because I've only seen Hellwitch once. And it was with, uh, I'm pretty sure that was a show with Nunslaughter and Crucify Mortals. This was probably, this is back when, I think Craig was still in Nunslaughter. I'm almost positive he was, but they played with Crucify Mortals. I think it was 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. It's quite some time ago. And that was the only time I saw Hellwitch. And uh, I thought live they were really good. Because Hellwitch, I'm not a huge fan of. I like their uh, Nosferatu demo. I have that on the 7-inch. That's great. The album, I remember being kind of like having those flowery fucking technical riffs that didn't that I didn't like. That's what I remember. But live, I remember it sounded good. And I remember the drummer really particularly standing up. Like, God damn, this guy's fucking... He, he, he can hit some fucking skins, god damn it. 13 years ago, though, so memory's a little hazy. Uh, also, I live in Alabama. Alabama, god damn it. Is there even a metal scene down there? I just picture a bunch of fucking goddamn swamps, mud, and just goddamn hillbillies. That's what I think of Alabama. But I never fucking been there, so fill me in. And was a huge fan of the band Flesh Ties. Oh, yeah, Flesh Times, Here Among Thorns, and um, the uh, EP. Uh, it was the first EP, um, Divide and Conquer. Divide and Conquer EP and Here Among Thors. That shit is fucking fantastic. It's on this old full CDs to this day. I know, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it. No, I wouldn't go as far as saying that. But I, I remember when Casey was living here for a little while and he joined Regurgitation for a little bit. This is the early 2000s. I got a little bit of a Casey story. Kind of, kind of funny, but it was embarrassing as fuck at the time. But uh, I was hanging out with him at one of the uh, death fests. He got to know, I, got, I don't know if he remembers this or not. We used to, like I said, when he was up here, I think he was staying in the shop with Brian or maybe around the corner or something like that, but he was always at the shop and always at the shows for about a year straight, maybe slightly less, slightly more. Uh, again, we're going back 20 fucking years, so <laughs> my math's off. <laughs> cut, me, cut me some fucking slack. So he kind of recognized us, you know, talking to me, we knew we were uh, fucking Flesh Ties fans. I, I still love those discs to this day. I thought they were fucking great. Actually, fucking putting those on an LP wouldn't be a goddamn bad idea. However, I don't know how many other people know Flesh Ties. Put in the comments, you know Flesh Ties. If you don't, you're missing the fuck out. On the Here Among Thorns, they cover, what do they cover? Rapture or Blood on My Hands? Definitely have one of the Morbid Angel songs on uh, Covenant. I remember they covered a Covenant song. I want to say it's Rapture. Anyways, um, so talked to Casey a lot. And I remember one of the Ohio Death Fests. And Ohio Death Fest was always in April. I uh, was sitting there standing talking to fucking Casey and... Uh, so I'm like 16 at the time, and my fucking nose just starts gushing blood and pours fucking blood all over his arm. Because back then, I'd fucking, uh, well, even probably this day, that's why, like, I use a lot of lotions and shit like this. Just genetically, my skin gets really dry easily. It always has since I was a kid. And if I'd ever use any, like, type of uh, moisturizer up my nose, um, my my shit would crack and bleed. It'd be annoying as a motherfucker. So I figured out, so now I haven't, I haven't nosebleeds or anything in, in years because I've not just known this. Just like if I don't lo lotion my hands and shit, it'll literally, like, especially in the wintertime, the skin will crack and bleed, too, all the time. It'll be all cracked. So just genetically, I've had uh, dry skin. So that was embarrassing as fuck. I mean, like I said, kind of knew him. He was really cool about it. I was like, oh, fuck, shit, sorry, man. Like, I'm a 16-year-old kid. <laughs> At the time, I assumed he's, like, 40. But he's probably, like, 25. <laughs> Maybe not even. 22, 25, something in that area, I'm guessing. Uh, he was really cool about it. He really, really friendly guy. So, oh, shit, don't worry about it. I was like, yeah, these goddamn nosebleeds, man. I was like, this fucking goddamn dry ass. Skin, fucking, uh, wasn't from blown coke. That's the goddamn sure. I'm sure some white ass gonna put that in there. That was not from that. So, um, yeah, that's my goddamn, uh, flesh tie story. Fully fucking aware of them. And, uh, so yeah, they played here a few times. They were great. I think, uh, I remember too, it was, I want to say it was at a death fest when flesh ties played. And that was the first time I got a Razorback record sample. It's got to have it in the first CD uh, that he put out the compilation disc. And he, uh, Casey threw some out in the fucking crowd. There was the one with the all black cover. I remember Bird Flush was on the uh, disc too. That's how I first heard Bird Flush. Fucking loved it. Um, so that's how I found out about Bird Flush. Been a fan ever since. And I remember the disc was, I think it said 1999 comp. And that's, that's how I picked it up. But it was because Casey threw them out. Show because they were not, Flush Ties was on it as well. I think I'm almost positive Flush Ties was on it, which was weird because, and I don't even remember, like, is, it was a Razorback comp. But when I was looking back, I was like, has, has Bird Flush ever been on Razorback? And as like a flush tie has ever been razor back, and I remember there's a few a few other bits. I think Deranged was on there too. Um 
And I thought it was weird because when I thought of Razorback, especially in the early days, I was thinking of bands like Ghoul, Frightmare, um, uh, who's the other fucking bands that, that, that were really early on, especially the one, uh, Blood Freak. Um, that's the shit I was thinking as far as the very early days of uh, Razorback. So, anywho, that's uh, a little bit of Flush Ties story. Not that, fuck, not that yes, no, God, God damn it. But, uh, yeah, I guess I kind of did know. Flush Ties, are they from Alabama? <laughs> I knew it was down south. Uh no, Casey, fucking say what's up. Tell Jada off Mel Zebbins. Who? Yeah, I doubt he remembers me. And maybe he does. I mean, three brothers running around. Maybe, maybe he does. The the Here Among Thors album is an all-time great. Got that right, Rob Roth. Don't forget that Divide and Conquer EP, too. That is a banger. That's what I got first with Divide and Conquer. That was the first release. It was out by Mighty Music. I can get you in touch with their bassist. Wasn't that, uh, wasn't the bassist, Casey? Didn't he do bass and vocals or did he do guitar and vocals? I just think it deserves a reissue and would be cool if Hell's put it out. I'd be into it. Uh, my only slight concern is how many people are aware of him. Uh, not that I, I still would be, and if he wanted 10 grand, I'd tell him to get lost. I was like, because I don't even know how well, I mean, we'll eventually move him, so I'd still be up for it just as a fan. But uh, not that I'm not saying he'd ask for 10 grand. Well, some of these bozos, you never know. I'm not going to say the guys who asked for 10 grand. It was, <laughs> there was a, a local band, I'm not going to say the name. And that's what they want to take. I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, nobody even knows who you are outside of Cleveland. You're out, you're out of your door, bro. bro. Get fucking lost and get fucked. Ten grand. So they just drive right over the next state over to PA Pittsburgh and they don't even know who the fuck you are. Out of your and it was all it was for some demos. They never did an album. It was it was complete fucking ridiculousness. Uh but yeah, I'd I'd definitely be into it. And again, not yeah, hey, you can put it down. I got jack shit to work with. Do all the work and scan a CD. It's like just forget it, man. But but yeah. If uh, all, all stars align, definitely up for it. Definitely up for it. Definitely go jamming if you missed it. Oh, it's been jammed to, to hell and back, bra bra. Granted, it's been a while since it's been jammed, but eh, less than five years ago. Probably the last time I listened to Flush Times was probably about, probably just pre COVID, I would say. If you missed it, back then or forgotten it. Didn't forget it either. Take care, goddamn it, Tim. So that's Tim for you, goddammit. Let's just, fuck, I'll get one goddamn question. We're at the 17-minute march. Tim got a whole fucking video. There you go, Timbo. Since I missed, since you missed out, Timbo, you got a whole fucking video, pretty much. Count Z did it. Oh, this is on the fucking video. Uh, j Dog throwing more posers in the scene under the bus. Yeah, j, j Dog throws them under the bus. Got it, got it. Can throw them somewhere. Goddamn master was throwing them in the pit, right? All the posers are wimps. She'll burn in the pit. One of my favorite lines. j dog has got to keep that spirit going, so he's throwing them in the bus. The mask was thrown in the pit, so j Dog came along years later, he's throwing him under the fucking bus. Let's keep it fucking going, goddammit. Count Z, Dan Aviscus, j Dog. which devil do you think has the best physique based on their comments? Uh, fuck, I have no idea. Uh, I, if, uh, one guess would be, I forget his user ID, was the one guy that called me out, and then we had to drop the drawers and fucking uh, show him what's up. Um, because he said he competed and shit like that, and he actually knew, like, bodybuilders or something like that, but I just think he fell off the wagon. So as far as his entire lifespan, probably him, but I, I, don't, I don't know what he looks like. So, I mean, some guys, I've seen some, especially nowadays, I've seen some fucking ridiculous ass shit where some guys at my gym or something, they're like, I, there's one dude, he's like in his 40s, right? He literally, like, if you saw him, you'd like, he looks like he's never touched a weight in his life, right? But he's, like, trying to better his life, and he's been going consistently, going to the gym, working out, Doing cardio, and uh, so he's, he's dropped some weight. Now, he wasn't like severely overweight, just kind of a normal guy that was just, you know, had a little bit of chunk on him, right? And he's been losing some weight stuff. And he's in the locker room talking about competing. I'm like, competing? Dude, what, what the fuck are you talking about? Swimming competing? A bike ride competing? What are you, what are you talking about? I, I sincerely hope you're not talking about getting on a bodybuilding show. You literally don't even look like you work out. 100%. If you went outside the gym and anyone else saw it, they'd be like, what would you curl? What would you do? curl snicker bars and then maybe take a bike ride like what are, what are you talking about and because he just got to the point where he's kind of like a normal dude but when i found out it's been explained to me maybe not explained but just kind of what people talk and i'm like here's what the mindset is somebody went from looking like complete dog shit like when you get those people that are severely severely overweight they lose a bunch of weight and yes they look better but so now their confidence went up to the roof which is great but it's like dude you don't you have no business still to go on a body stage. You, you're not in that level. Yes, you're better than where you're at, but they're kind of proud of themselves and want to show their progress off. It's like, but dude, you, you're going to literally embarrass yourself. Like, you flat out completely fucking embarrass yourself. That's one of the reasons, there's multiple reasons why I've never competed. I've been tons of people on my job. Like, oh, you gotta compete, gotta compete, gotta compete. I've been told by guys that actually compete. Like, dude, you gotta compete. When they see me, 
And uh, the, one of the reasons I don't, there's multiple reasons I don't, is because I don't, I see my music as like, eh, it's not good enough for competition. Competition is, to me, a show, a circus. You want to see something impressive. When I look at, I, I, I compare myself to the fucking pros, which I'm nowhere near, and not the fucking pro where everybody knows Chris Bumstead. Fuck all them, dude. I'm talking about the fucking, the, the, re, the real man. The open, God damn it. The guy who just won this year, my favorite. Potty True Bomber. I've been a, that's, I've been my favorite for the, for the few, as far as current guys competing. So it was cool as fuck seeing him win. Other guys I really like is Samson Dada, uh, uh, Nick Walker, those guys. So I compare myself to them as far as current. When I first got into this, I was looking at Sean Ray, Lee Priest, Flex Wheeler, Kevin Roboni, uh, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler. I was comparing myself to that. And I'm like, well, I'm nowhere near there, so I'm not trying I'm not going to compete. I know I understand that's kind of a fucking extreme viewpoint because there's amateurs, etc. But still, it's like that's how I look at it. I was like, fuck. I was like, but these guys, I was like, I'm, I'm going to go for this, this guy. I'm going to go compete. I'm like, dude, if I stripped down to my skivvies right now and we were to fucking do a pose down, I was like, I would blow you the fuck away, destroy you. And I was like, and I'm not even considering competing. Like, what the fuck are you thinking about competing for? So you get those delusional motherfuckers. Good time to bring it up, too, because uh, New Year, I'm sure a lot of guys are trying to get in shape. Not to discourage you. Try to get in shape and do the best you fucking can. But just don't be delusional walking around with imaginary flat syndrome because you fucking lost 20 pounds. It's like, all right, you look, yeah, you're doing good. You lost, you're bettering your life. But what they? I mean, you ain't no fucking Phil Heath or nothing. So stop walking around like you are. Because you look like because everyone else that's in the know is looking at you like you're a fucking idiot. So... Just keep that in mind so you don't make an ass out of yourself. J Dog, let you know, goddammit. Anyways, that's it for this one, Devils. Comments, questions, concerns, you know what the fuck to do. Put the guy back in and answer for morning. Later, goddammit.